Good morning, everyone. Very warm welcome to our worship today on this All Saints Sunday, and a particular welcome if you're visiting us, uh, visiting us for the first time this morning. Um, a great festival day of the church, so there are lots of, uh, I think, really good, powerful hymns. So there's a challenge for you this morning. Um, and obviously, um, I've got to go through all the saints in my sermon, so it'll be elongated more than usual. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, I'll do the notices after we receive communion, but just to say again, a really warm welcome. It's good to be together as saints above and saints below. And so we begin our worship with our first hymn, Ye Watchers and Ye Holy Ones, hymn number 230.
so we worship now as we live in the name of the father and of the son and of the holy spirit amen grace mercy and peace from god our father and the lord jesus christ be with you please would you be seated As we've just sung together, O oh, friends, in gladness let us sing, supernal anthems echoing. We, of course, always reflect the worship of heaven, and we are joined with the saints eternal as we worship this morning. And so as we acknowledge the presence of a great cloud of witnesses surrounding us, so we spend a moment in quiet, welcoming them into our worship this day. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So on page two of our order of service, we come to our prayers of penitence and an introduction set for All Saints Sunday. Jesus calls us to share the heavenly banquet of his love with all the saints in earth and heaven. Knowing our unworthiness and sin, let us now ask from him both mercy and forgiveness. Now the good news of Jesus is that there is forgiveness in his name. So now may almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now stand to sing the song of the angels, the Gloria. Glory be to God on high.
So now as we're standing together, I'm going to pray the collect prayer for All Saints Sunday. Let us pray. God of holiness, your glory is proclaimed in every age. As we rejoice in the faith of your saints, inspire us to follow their example with boldness and joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We sit now for our first Bible reading. The reading is taken from Revelation chapter 21, verses 1 to 6a, in which John has a vision of a new heaven and a new earth, where God will establish his kingdom of peace. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To the thirsty I will give water as a gift from the spring of the water of life. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. As you are able, I'm going to invite us to stand once again as we sing our gradual hymn, number 227.
So we continue with the Alleluia on page four of our order of service. Alleluia, Alleluia. You are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, called out of darkness into his own marvelous light. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So may I now speak in the name of the living God, our creator, redeemer, and sustainer. Amen. Please, would you sit down? I just need to check. Has anyone ever been to St. Thomas Fifth Avenue, New York? Yep, a few have. Can I check further? Has anyone got any relatives there or who worship regularly? Does anyone know the vicar? <laughs> Good, that's all right, I can continue. So this is a story from a little while ago when I was uh, a curate myself and I'd gone with one of the choirs attached to my church on a tour of the States and I was a kind of chaplain to the choir. And every church we went to, um, I was invited to take part. It was very gracious. Um, and in some churches I presided at the Eucharist, others I sang even song with a choir, so I what's called cantored, so I get to do the, oh Lord, open thou our lips bit, which I'm doing at the cathedral tomorrow. Do tune in, it's on YouTube. Um, it's really good, the girls are singing on their own, um, so Sophie will be singing, it's, it's really beautiful, not that I'm biased, you understand. So we got to St. Thomas Fifth Avenue, and it is quite the church, sitting there 
it, not quite in the middle of New York, but it has a huge ministry um, and all sorts of international things going on. So when I was showed into a side room, I thought, well, I wonder what they're going to ask me to do uh, in this great church. Maybe they'll ask me to cant or even song or read a lesson. Anyway, the rector, no, that wasn't sent. It was just a junior minister sent to uh, see me, and he instantly started quizzing me on what degrees I had. And that got my back up um, quite a bit. And I said, well, what, what would you like me to do for this service? Do you want me to canter? Oh, no, 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 he said. We'll, um, no, 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 you won't be doing that. I said, do you want me to read a lesson or something? Oh, no, 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 you just follow the choir in, go and sit down there and just be quiet and take in the service. So I thought, okay, I'm a visitor, breathe in, calm, be good. So I went in and I thought, well, they're bound to have this super cantor. I'm looking forward to this. So I went in, sat down. Their cantor stood up, the organ gave a note, and he went, O oh Lord, open thou our lips. And the choir looked at me and went, help. Uh, and I thought, no, there's nothing I can do. So I must admit, I was sitting there in this glorious church, and it is quite grumpy. Um, and I feel very bad to this day for that. But it was a particular blessing then when afterwards I got to spend some time with some of their congregation who began to fill me in with the history of that great church. And I think it was quite a saintly story. I wonder what you think. So they took me back to 1905, and the third church to have occupied the current site in New York. And tragically, the church burnt down. But bearing in mind this was 1905, it was well insured for $100,000. So in 1906, the then rector collected the insurance check and on his way home, passed the offices of the New York Times, which was appealing for donations in the wake of the terrible San Francisco earthquake in which 3,000 people had died and 80% of the city had been destroyed. So without any consultation at all, and bearing in mind I'm standing opposite our treasurer at the moment, the rector donated the money, all of it, to the appeal, because he thought their needs were greater. But unbeknown to him, the Times then ran with the story on its front page about the church that had given away everything that it had. And within a few days, back to the church, six million had been donated. And I think that was an example, not necessarily of recklessness, although don't worry, PCC and wardens, if I do get a check for 100,000, I will go through the proper procedures, mostly. But it was saintly behavior. It was brave. It was courageous, perhaps a little bit uncompromising, and taking a huge risk in earthly terms, perhaps to do the right thing. But as we gathered together this morning, I wonder what we think, what do we think, what do we mean by a saint? It may be that you have one sitting near you this morning. Do turn and have a look some saintly people all gathered together. It may be that we have a favorite saint. My own is the nearest thing we as Anglicans have to a saint, Edward King. He was the Bishop of Lincoln between 1885 and 1910. I say nearest because the Anglican Church doesn't formally make saints in the way that our brothers and sisters in the Roman Catholic Church do. But Edward King was known as a saintly, pastoral, and holy man who simply drew people to him because of the holiness that simply radiated from him. And I think we all know people like that. But Edward's favorite passage of Scripture was from the Psalms, verse eight, no, 18, Psalm 18, verse 35. Thy gentleness hath made me 
great. Thy gentleness hath made me great. It's rather nice. And I'm sure that we can think, all of us, of people whom we might just want to describe as saintly. And hallelujah for that. But sainthood might just seem to be beyond us, with saints seeming to be, and I wish this line I'm going to quote was mine. It isn't. It's from Neil, who used to be the chaplain at Repton before our wonderful Adam. He was preaching on all saints once and said, well, sometimes we can look at saints as God's little overachievers. I quite like that. Those of you who know Neil, that's a very him thing to say. God's little overachievers who are so amazing that we can't possibly reach their dizzying heights. I hope you get to meet one day a friend of mine, Carolyn, with whom I was ordained and served together on the same ministry team. She would disagree with those dizzying height bits. She loves the saints and constantly seeks to teach on them and about them. These holy people who are indeed there not to depress us with their amazing heroics of the faith, but to inspire us and remind us of our saintly calling. As it says in 1 Peter, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, and a holy nation. So you and I are called to be a holy people, and holy simply relates to being like God. And that is what Jesus came to show us, how to love and to be loved, how to glow, if you like, with that inner peace that we can see often in others too. It's a bit like that. Do you remember the Ready Breck adverts years ago? Eat the Ready Breck and get up. It was get up and glow with Ready Breck, wasn't it? There we are. I'm that old. But in our saintly gospel reading for today, we see that wonderful story of Lazarus. Lazarus is set free by, by Jesus, set free even at that point from the grip of death. And I think to be saints, a holy people, we must also be free from all that binds us and prevents us not from not just following Jesus, but from living the life that he asks us to live. Mary and Martha thought they'd lost their brother, but Jesus still needed him, and nothing but nothing was going to stop that. So as saints together, May we too be set free for saintly, costly action that builds the kingdom. Just like those parts of San Francisco were rebuilt all those years ago with generous, outlandish generosity. But we have so many resources. For example, that letter to the Hebrews. Therefore, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Those witnesses are the saints of the church eternal, who are, even as we sit here this morning, literally cheering us on as the saints of the church temporal here on earth. And the saints, for all their flaws, and there really were many, remind us that as Christians, we are never really alone as we run that race that is set before us. But I'm going to finish by returning to my beloved Bishop Edward King. It was once said of him, being filled with that divine light, that he could, and I quote, draw love out of a stone. He could draw love out of a stone. And I think that is quite a saintly challenge as we run the race together, cheered on each and every day. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So as we're seated together, now going to ask if Stephen will lead us in our time of prayer. Let us pray. To our prayer, Lord, make us all. Please respond, worthy of our calling. Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the example of the holy saints, praying that we may follow in their footsteps and yours, Jesus Christ. May we grow more like you, seeking your will in all things, as did the saints. Please help us to devote ourselves and all that we do to your glory and to the service of our neighbours. Lord, make us all worthy Worthy of of our calling. We thank you, Father, for the faithful prayers of so many over the generations for their lifetimes of quiet godliness, for the struggles bravely borne and the witness of strong faith, for those who have maintained this place of worship over so many generations. Lord, make us all worthy of our calling. Heavenly Father, thank you for all peacemakers and those who strive for justice and reconciliation. As we remember the people of Gaza, Israel, Lebanon, the Middle East and the Ukraine. Thank you for those who work to relieve suffering and manage the world's resources more fairly. Help us, Lord, not to squander the riches of the earth you've given us, destroying its beauty for personal economic gain. Lord, make us all worthy worthy of of our our calling. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the blessing and hope of each new generation, for the richness of good friendships, for the happiness of those in love, for the comfort of prayer support. Give us eyes to see the needs of others and hearts to respond through prayer and practical action. Help us to be open to those who wish to care for us, receiving as well as giving when needed. Lord, make us all worthy Worthy of our calling. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the care and attention given to those who are sick, in pain, bereaved and depressed. We pray that they may have an awareness of your presence, bearing those burdens with them, and always working towards their healing and wholeness. And we pray quietly now for all who've asked for our prayers and all on our hearts who need your reassuring love. Lord, make us all worthy Worthy of of our our calling. 
Heavenly Father, receive into your care those near to death and those who have died recently, remembering Peter Jenner, Lucy McLean, Barbara, Barbara Matir, and any others known to us. Lord, as we remember the souls of the faithful departed, we thank you for the gift of their lives and for all that they continue to mean to us. Help us each day, we pray, to put our lives right with you and to trust that through your grace we, with all your saints and loved ones departed, may rest in your eternal keeping. We pray together. Merciful Father, accept these, these prayers, prayers for the for sake, the sake of, your of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As you are able, please would you stand. We are fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, through Christ our Lord, who came and preached peace to those who were far off and those who were near. And so may the peace of the Lord be always with you. A sign of peace may be offered. So a bit for memory now, we're going to sing the offertory hymn number 232, which is for all the saints, and we're going to sing verses 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8. <laughs> verses, so evens, then the last two, 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8. Uh, so between us, we'll get somewhere towards the end of the hymn. So that's verses 1, 2, 4, 7, and 8, and I will try and remember too. We sing.
was just checking if anyone was singing an extra verse. Excellent. I think we all got there together. And of course, verse four of that hymn is the famous Bishop Chaplin's uh, song, um, We Feebly Struggle, They in Glory Shine, which I quite like. So we continue with a prayer of offering set for All Saints Day. To you we come, Father of lights, with angels and saints, where heaven and earth unite. May Jesus meet us in the breaking of the bread. Amen. The Lord is here. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And now we give you thanks, most gracious God, surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses and glorified in the assembly of your saints. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. We, your holy church, acclaim you in communion with angels and archangels and with all who served you on earth and worship you now in heaven, we raise our voice to proclaim your glory, forever praising you and singing. Praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And as we obey his command, send your Holy Spirit, that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends, and taking bread, he praised you. He broke the bread, gave it to them, and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again he praised you, gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. Bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation, we proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Lord of all life, Help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favor on your people, gather us in your loving arms and bring us with wisdom and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, O loving Father, forever and ever. Amen. So 
are now being made one by the power of the Spirit. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Before I use the formal words of invitation, just a reminder that all are welcome at this altar, for it is Jesus that bids us come. So now draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
at the top of page 12, we pray together. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet. Amen. Before I pray God's blessing, uh, just a few notices. And firstly to say I'm embracing my Franciscan side because we have not one but somewhere two butterflies up here on the altar. So that's, I'm glad they're butterflies and not wasps. I have theological questions about those. Um, Firstly, to say a huge thank you to the friends for, uh, and I was very sorry to miss it, but for a wonderful lecture yesterday with hundreds of people here uh, filling the church. So again, thank you to the friends uh, for all that went into making yesterday a wonderful success. And here's to next year already. Plans are in the offing. Um, also to extend a very warm invitation to everyone who would like to come to our All Souls service later this afternoon at four o'clock. That's a very special service as part of All Saints where we remember ones who've gone before us uh, who now dwell in eternal light. Uh, so again, that's a very special service and you would be most welcome at that service. We're looking at beyond, or I can't believe we're in November already, but um, at towards the end of November, on the 23rd, we have our Christmas uh, fair, and this is an invitation for help with Christmas hampers. Uh, so donations are needed before the 23rd, and you can leave those in the box at the back of church. Um, hopefully that's okay. Lovely. So we have been all quite all over the place with our hymns today, and apologies, I've chosen one that isn't in the hymn book, so you may like to get, to get that ready after the blessing, as we'll sing that in just a moment. But I'm going to use a special blessing, it's called a solemn blessing for All Saints Day, and you can find that on page 14. It's like an ordinary blessing, but with added bling. May God, who kindled the fire of his love in the hearts of all the saints, pour upon you the riches of his grace. Amen. May he give you joy in their fellowship and a share in their praises. Amen. May he strengthen you to follow them in the way of holiness and to come to the full radiance of glory. Amen. And now may the blessing of God Almighty the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest upon each of you and upon all whom you love and pray for this week and always. Amen. And so we turn to our hymn sheet and sing, sing together. Thanks be to God for his saints.
so go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.